ASP.NET Web Forms provides a robust set of features that are available to us as developers that we can really leverage to not only be more productive, but really write a lot less code and hopefully less bugs in the process. So if I had to sum up what an ASP.NET Web Form page is, it's really a programmable web page. So as opposed to having just a regular HTML page, the overall goal of an ASP.NET Web Forms page is to serve up HTML, but dynamically. So we've been able to do that for years. We've had PHP, and we can use uh, JSP. We could use classic ASP. But what really sets the ASP.NET Web Forms model apart, in my mind, is that, number one, it's very, very easy to do a lot of work or get a lot, a lot of work done without having to write a lot of code. And so we'll talk about and touch on web controls later in this module. So the overall goal, though, is to serve up HTML dynamically. And as we do it, what's nice is everything is object-oriented. So if you're doing C Sharp or VB, you're going to be writing classes with properties, methods, events, those types of things. But every page that you write will ultimately derive from the ASP.NET page class. This gives us a lot of functionality. We can do things like set focus using it. We can go in and check if things are valid. We can check if there's been a post back and much more, actually. So by using the page class in web controls, it's really easy to display data. We can collect data. And as I just mentioned, we can validate our data as well. Now, if I were to break down the features of ASP.NET Web Forms, we can kind of break them down into several different groupings. So the first is ASP.NET controls. So when you get ASP.NET and install either Visual Studio or the Web Developer Express that we'll be using, you can use security controls. That's just built in out of the box. And we'll actually have a whole module talking about some of that later in this video series. Now, security controls make it easy to log in and log out. We can do registration of users. And even what if they forget their password? Well, we can help with that too. Data controls are, at least for me, really where it's at, though. Uh, most of the applications I work on are line of business applications for different size companies, large, small, medium, it really depends. But they generally display and collect a lot of data. Well, what really sets ASP.NET Web Forms apart, in my mind, from some of the different options out there is how easy it is to integrate data into your applications. And so we'll have a couple modules on data access techniques and controls. We'll talk about things like the grid view control that makes it super easy to output columnar data, and there's many others. Now, another feature of web controls that's built in to ASP.NET Web Forms is navigation. If you'd like to do breadcrumb trails, so the user can basically track where they are, if you'd like to do a tree view control or a hierarchical menu, all that stuff's built in, and you can even create a specialized XML file called a web sitemap. And that makes it easy to tie into breadcrumb trails, menus, and things like that. Now, the final kind of general category is web parts. Now, web parts are actually what SharePoint is built upon. It uses ASP.NET to uh, do most of its core integration. And you can even use web parts outside of SharePoint. And that's also another big thing. Now, a few others to note here that I personally use from time to time are there's also AJAX controls that we can use. So if we want to perform partial page postbacks where we don't reload the whole page, that's also available. And we'll look at some of that later. Now, some of the key features. We do have full support for, uh, we could say, laying out our pages, what we call master pages. Now, a master page really is just a template. Uh, nowadays, it's very common that as you navigate, navigate to different pages, that they all have the similar look and feel. Now, that was quite a bit different than when I started in the mid-90s with this, where almost every page looked different. Well, now using master pages, it's very, very easy to add consistency throughout all the pages in your site and really simplify your maintenance. Now, another nice feature for people that need to skin or theme sites is the ability to create skin files and custom themes with CSS. That's also a feature built into ASP.NET, and it allows you to really leverage CSS to the max if you need it. Localization is also available. Uh, this provides built-in support for multilingual type apps. So you might have uh, English, you might have German, Spanish, whatever it may be. 
And then the web controls that we're going to be talking about are adaptive. They can generate HTML to browsers based upon the browser's capabilities and features. Now, there's also a bunch of services that are available. One of the biggest things that is generally kind of a pain with general web applications is uh, security. So we have two types of things we can do that's really nice when it comes to security. And that includes a membership provider, which allows us to track user membership and log users in and out of a system. We can use Windows authentication, or we can even use custom databases. And Microsoft actually has one that works out of the box. Very, very nice and easy to use. We can also manage roles. In authenticated applications, oftentimes it's not enough to just know the user. We want to actually go in and show or hide different parts of the page based upon specific roles they may be in. Now, moving along to some of the others, we have personalization features. So if you want to track personal settings for users, that's also available. And that can even tie into that database I mentioned. Uh, I've already talked a little bit about navigation controls, but there is a navigation provider. So you can even customize that to, say, store your navigation in, say, a database. Really robust support for caching. Now, I really can't underestimate how important that is for high scalability sites and high availability sites. If you have a site and the data doesn't have to change every second, then you can actually cache entire pages, parts of a page, or even go down to the individual data objects. And then finally, we have some management APIs to allow us to take a look at what our website's doing and some of the different things that are going on with it. So what's in a web form, actually? Well, we've talked about that web forms inherit from the page class. And there's several things, though, that you'll find inside of the ASPX part of a web form. And that's the extension we're going to be seeing that we've seen up to this point, actually. I'm going to run through these real quick. Some of these we'll talk about quite a bit as we move along in this video series. Others are maybe a little more rare to use, but you may come across them. So the first is directives. Now, one of the most common directives is the page directive. So you'll notice this percent at symbol on the left side. And the page directive, in this particular case, we know it's a directive because of that percent at. It defines things like the language, the code file, C Sharp or VB, that might be associated with the page, and those types of things. So again, all of these things we're talking about will go in the ASPX page. The server-side script blocks allow us to integrate C Sharp or VB code right into our ASPX page. Now, I personally don't use this feature very much. I prefer to keep it totally separate, and we'll actually be talking about that next. You might also see render blocks. Now, these are pretty common across multiple frameworks, including classic ASP, the predecessor to ASP.NET. This allows, in this example, the user details variable, whatever the value is of that, to be written out from the server side and injected into the HTML content. So that percent equal simply means write out the value of that variable. Now, those aren't used quite as commonly as they used to be, but there's occasions where you might use those. That brings us to really, as I mentioned earlier, kind of the heart and soul of web forms, and that is web server controls. Now, you'll always know a Microsoft web server control, the default ones anyway, because they'll start with this ASP colon, and they'll have the run at server on the tag. Now, these are controls that run at the server side and simply generate HTML. So in the case of the label, this simply generates span tags. And there's many more that we're going to be talking about in this video series. Now, there's a couple others that you might come across, depending on what you're doing. And that is user controls, which we'll talk about at the end of this module. Again, that's for headers, footers, things that repeat across pages. And then you also may see ASP.NET expressions. Now, expressions are a little bit different because unlike directives that use percent at, expressions use percent dollar. And so this particular expression would allow us to read a connection string without having to write any C Sharp or VB code to do it. So this would go in the ASPX page and pull out the Northwind connection string from a file called web.config. Very useful as you're using data source controls, which we'll be covering. And then finally, we'll be talking about data binding, one of my favorite features of ASP.NET and something you'll do frequently. Anytime you see a percent pound, that is a data binding expression. You can do what it's shown here, and you can use the eval function to write out a field name. 
So you may, might have a result set that comes back from the database and you want to write out a specific field in the web page. So we'll be talking about these in conjunction with items control such as the grid view. So there's a lot of great stuff that's available and as we move along in this module and others we'll be introducing these features with more detail.